Hi everyone, welcome back. Today's episode is going to be focused on coping exercises. So before we begin, just a reminder, these exercises are done at your own risk and listening discretion is advised. Even though nothing serious is going on, I just say that as a reminder. For full disclaimer and for the full introduction, please refer back to the previous podcast. All right, let's get to it. So there's three main things I'm going to touch on today that I feel has made a tremendous difference for me. And for my children while I was teaching. So I used to be a choir teacher and um, obviously during this time I can't do much in terms of music. However, in the choir I did various relaxation types of exercises and coping exercises or let's call them grounding exercises to let the children relax and to just open their minds for the space before we start. All right. So the first thing, of course, we're not going to sing today or do anything musical. So don't stress. You don't need any skill to do these exercises. However, I am going to come to you from a musical or singing perspective, even though no singing will take place. Trust me, it will make sense as we go on. So the first thing we need to get right is breathing. Now, most people, even though you are born and breathing is the first thing you do, um, most people do it wrong, believe it or not. So before we begin with exercise number one, which is to regulate your breathing and, and re, let's say, um, reprogram your breathing, I'm going to ask you a question. Um, now, my students will obviously know the answer to this one. Uh, if they're listening, but let's see if you can answer this question. It, when you breathe, right, do you expand or do you contract? So I want you to think or try, just focus on your breathing. So when you breathe, when you inhale, does your body get bigger or smaller? I'll give you like a few seconds for for you to, to think on that. All right, if you answered smaller, you are wrong. Most people suck the air in and they go smaller when they inhale. This is incorrect. All right, because you are breathing too shallow and you're not getting all the air into your lungs. So this can of course lead you to feeling a tightness on your chest or on your um, you know, upper body and even up to your diaphragm. Since we use our whole body to sing, we also can use the whole body to breathe. So, right, let's get that correct. So this is an exercise in, for breathing that you can do anywhere. I used to tell my kids, you could do it in class while you're sitting and waiting for your teacher, or when you don't have any sp things specific to do and you're just sitting somewhere. Um, of course, I prefer in singing that we stand, but you can do the sitting down, standing, whatever, doesn't matter. All right, so what you're going to be doing now is I want you to put your hands not on your hips, but underneath your lungs, so where you can feel your rib cage. Okay, and now I want you to take a breath in and I want you to feel the rib cage pressing against your hands. So I'm quickly going to do it. So one, two, three. One, two, three. Right. So on the inhale, the rib cage should be pressing against your hands. On the exhale, the rib cage should be pressing away from your hands towards your body. Another way of testing that's a little bit easier is by putting your hands just here, I'd say, by your diaphragm. If you don't know where that is, if you can feel your heart, you can just move a little bit lower and, <clears throat> excuse me, you will be pressing just above your belly button, I'd say. 
So then when you inhale, you will get bigger. I usually say like a balloon. All right, so I'm going to count to three and we are going to inhale and you are going to swell up like a balloon. One, two, three. And exhale, one, two, three. Right. These seconds that I'm counting does not have to be three seconds. You can make it as long as you want and you will find that your lung capacity or breathing capacity will increase. So some people can do this for a minute or hold it for a minute. These are more, I wouldn't say advanced exercises, maybe a little bit advanced, but it's up to you. Um, this is for singings to increase your breathing potential and that type of thing. But I think for anxiety, this is also a great trick because you're breathing in deeper, your brain is getting more oxygen and that is always a good thing. Right, so now that you know how to breathe correctly, it might be a funny experience for you, but this exercise is quite an important one. So you can do this as you sit and, you, and you're pensive, you're like you're thinking of stuff or you just, you know, you don't have something particular to do. Focus on the breathing again and do that ballooning exercise or the exercise where you put your hands on your rib cage and you do a few of them and you will see a change. It, it's really, if you do this regularly, you will start breathing co correctly. Not that you've been breathing, you understand what I mean, like using correct breathing techniques. And then you can try doing these exercises standing up. So then when we stand up, we open up ourselves. So this brings me to the second one. All right, so the kids used to laugh at me because this one works well when you stand. Okay, so I, I'm actually going to stand up and do it with you. So it helps when I do it to explain. So you're going to stand and this is a self-soothing exercise. So it's also body awareness. And this will really release the tension. Okay, so a lot of people when they sing, they tend to hunch up their shoulders or they tend to be very tense when they sing because they're either nervous or they think the, the posture is incorrect or they think they should stand like a soldier, which is not the case. So when we sing, we stand um, hip width apart and we try, we obviously breathe properly and that sort of thing. So you try and stand hip width apart so that you are balanced. Okay, you're not going to sing, you're just going to do this exercise. So what we are going to do is, why the children usually laugh is because I tell them they must squeeze their bum and everything, their whole body, they must squeeze it so, so, so tight. And they must hold it until I tell them, let loose. So this is my own little exercise. I call it squeeze really tight and let loose. So let's try it. So everything, your whole body, all your muscles. You're going to squeeze really tight as if it's like a boa constrictor worming its way around your body. Tight, 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 tight. As tight as you possibly can. Your face, your body, your legs, everything. And let That should feel quite nice. Let's do it once more. You're going to squeeze extremely tight. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Every muscle, everything. Squeeze so tight. Everything so tight. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And let loose, relax. So that should feel really nice. Um, you should feel already some pressure release. All right, you can do that as many times as you like. I, I'd say your legs will start to feel like jelly after a while, but it's a nice exercise. All right, and some people are, are experiencing some panic attacks. Um, or some problems with overwhelm, being overwhelmed. So this exercise is for when you are feeling the pressure real bad. Like your brain, like I explained in the introduction, the information overload, your brain is running away with you at 200 kilometers an hour and it's just this you just want everything to come to a standstill. You need to regain your focus and we call that grounding yourself. Right. So this grounding exercise is 
not one that I came up with. It is on net, but I sort of put my own spin on it. So this is the, um, I like to call it the census grounding exercise. So what we're going to do now is you are going to focus on your senses. So, and it's going to work from five down to one. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to focus on, okay, firstly, okay, I'm sorry, I must say this. I want you to close your eyes throughout this whole exercise, okay? That will help still your mind. Um, I know this is not required necessarily, however it works, because you need to visualize, okay, when you do this. So a lot of the times imagination and uh, using your skill to visualize while actually not seeing anything in front of you is a handy tool to relax and to calm yourself. Especially, like I said, when your brain is like a hamster running very, very fast in the wheel. Okay, so I want you to close your eyes now. Right, think of five things you can see. Any five things. Now obviously your eyes are closed but wherever you are five things in that room or that area that you can see. So you need to basically visualize the area in your brain. Okay. Think of those five things. List them off on your fingers. All right so you can you need to remember these five things for later it is important. So think of these five things you need to hold on to those five things. Don't be flippant about it. Don't just go, okay, I saw five, saw in um, quotation marks five things. No. What are those five things? You need to remember them. Right. Now, four things you can touch. All right. Try and vary it. Don't try and just uh, copy paste the stuff you used for the seeing one. Okay, but you need to remember them as well. Okay, four things you can touch in that environment where you are. Okay, hold on to that information. Use your fingers. It helps. It really helps. Right. Next thing, three things you can hear. Now, you can obviously use your ears for this one and listen. Okay, just listen. Three things you can hear. Right. Hold on to that information. Two things you can smell. Right, use your nose for this one. You don't have to use your imagination for this. You can try and use your nose. If you cannot smell anything at this particular stage, that's okay. Just think of something you could possibly smell. It's the same with the hearing. If you, if you don't hear three things in particular, Imagine what could you have possibly heard. All right. Number one is taste. One thing you can taste. Okay. And you can use your imagination for this. All right. Now we're going to go backwards. Now I want you to rehearse. In other words, recall what you have done thus far. Easy. What is the thing? that you tasted or one thing that you could taste what is your item what is the two things you could smell what is the three things you could hear what are the four things that you could touch what are the five things that you could see i want you to see that list in front of you and go through it in your mind now i would like you to open your eyes. Immediately you should feel some relief and to feel more focused. Also for panic attacks, the breathing, come back to your breathing, get bigger like a balloon and deflate like a balloon when you exhale. Do that a few times and you should feel some relief. I hope these coping exercises is of some help to you guys you can listen to this again try it again and spice it up so hold your breath for longer and do the inhale for longer and the exhale 
um, f for longer or vary your, your time so it doesn't get boring or just sort of repetitive or just I'm just going through the motions you need to focus on what you are doing when you do these exercises otherwise they're not going to be they're going to become routine it's good to be routine it's good if you have a routine but they mustn't become automatic that's the right word it mustn't be an automatic thing it must be a focused thing these exercises you need to put thought into it all right so i hope you guys have a wonderful week ahead or day with whenever you're listening to this podcast and use these exercises and give me feedback that they help you was it in any way um anything that you would change about it please let me know and i'll see you in the next podcast